Great. Well, it's a great turnout. So thank you for everyone um, for being here today. So my name is Reese. Um, I'm an accountant relationship manager here at Namisma. Um, so looking after all of our existing clients, prospective clients. And what I'm going to do in this little hour session is just give everyone an overview of what Namisma is, what we do, um, how we can essentially help you streamline your practice and, and your productivity and efficiencies with our cloud-based accounting suite. So essentially a bit about Namisma is we are a fully cloud-based cloud accounting suite. Um, we're fully integrated as well. So the services that we provide are bookkeeping, payroll, self-assessment, um, CRM as well. So, and essentially with all of these modules is all of the modules are completely interconnected. So as a result of any um, sort of data entry that you do in one part, what it would do is filter through to the respective part um, as you go. So we're sort of ending data duplication, um, deadline management as well. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll get into it, just the initial overview introduction. And as I say, any questions that anyone has, just pop me, pop me in and um, we'll, we'll go through it there and then. So this would be the first screen that you log into when you logged into your Demisma agent dashboard. Now, demo agent is obviously just the demo account that I'm using for the purposes of today, but this would be your practice dashboard. So this is where you would manage all of your workload, all of your clients, um, you would be able to go into each of these tabs here to see any deadlines and the sort of dashboards with, with final accounts due, self-assessments due, etc. But I'll get into that in, in just a few moments. This client box on the left-hand side, again, just a synopsis of the practice um, of the all of your clients in, in the practice. So type of client that you have, cross-reference with the type of service that you provide that client. And over on the right-hand side here, um, there's, a, there's, there's a very big practice management element um, over with Namisma. So really helping you sort of manage your deadlines, manage your tasks, manage your clients. Um, so this deadline box, uh, we are completely interconnected with HMRC, Companies House and your pension providers. So what it will do is as a result of setting up any clients and any internal sort of deadlines that you set yourself, it will pull them through here. So from the practice end, you can see everything that's due. So you can click into those VAT returns that are overdue. And you'll see all those VAT returns for your clients there that are overdue and you can go ahead and, and begin working on them. So just sort of admin ad hoc e staff um, out the way is when we so in order to actually get your clients into the MISMA, we can go ahead here to the plus button. So any business clients, we can click add business. And as I say, we are completely interconnected with HMRC and Companies House. So if you were adding a limited company, you can search Companies House Directed. Sorry, one second. I'm just going to shut my window. Some traffic going outside. Um, yeah, so in, completely interconnected with Companies House and HMRC. So as a result of adding any clients in, what you can actually do is search Companies House directly, find the company that you're importing into your Lamisma system, and it will just pull through the relevant information for that company. So easily set them up, and it will also pull through any deadlines. So company information on the left, direct information on the right. Alternatively, you can add them in manually, and we also support CSV imports and exports on every page of Lamisma. So whatever data you've got in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet or another software, um, you can import that in en masse through CSV. Add client function. So this is where you would come to add any of those self-assessment clients, UTR numbers, that kind of thing, just the, the admin to get them initially set up. And I'll show you where it all goes um, as we go through. Also have the functionality to add any accountant users. So within your practice, or if you need, if you outsource any work, you need a, a, a member of staff or a colleague to have access to Namisma, you can do so. You can set their rights, restrict their rights, and in turn, um, again, it feeds into the practice management element because you're able to allocate work to your members of staff or colleagues. Similarly, the, the business user, so, here you can give all of your business users their own login as well. So you can restrict and give access 
um, to certain rights that you want your business user to use so they can do all of their own bookkeeping. Um, we have at Namisma, we have two apps. So we have a Namisma bookkeeping app and we also have a Namisma payroll app. Now the bookkeeping app is a place where your client can go, they can log in, they can raise any sales invoices, they can upload any receipts um, ready for you to see in real time. So you can give as many business users and accountant user licenses out as you wish. The payroll app, I'll, I'll show you later as well, so it's a bit separate to this, but um, yeah, you, you, we have a payroll app as well. So that is essentially the initial setup and view of your agent dashboard. Now, the first thing I'm going to go into today is show you our self-assessment module. So if I head over to self-assessment on the left-hand side from your agent dashboard and go into your client list, this is where, as a result of setting any of your self-assessment clients up, this is where your self-assessment will sit. So you can see here, I've got a whole list of self-assessment clients. Now, as I say, the interconnection with HMRC, um, this submission status is live and direct feed from HMRC. So all the mess, all HMRC messaging will come back into your Namisma dashboard. Um, so you can, you can manage that element as well. Um, you can see this tax returns failed. If you click into the failed, it's come through the message from HMRC. It was an authentication failure. Similarly, there's also, again, feeding into the practice management, there is the work status. So you're actually able to set internal work status notes um, for any of your self-assessment clients. So again, if you've got you know, multiple users and allocated work, everyone can sort of see where they're at with which client, which is um, a very nice feature. So from the agent dashboard then, um, again, you can see the account managers here. So feeding into that um, allocation of work. If I head on into a client dashboard specifically, what you can do here. So each of your self-assessment clients will have their own dashboard. Again, you can see this is sort of the, the live feeds from HMRC. Here you've got some key figures, some KPIs. So as a result of any data entry, you just get a nice little snapshot up here. Come in here, set any work status notes. I've got a few options here and um, just to see where you're at with that client. Again, feeding into your agent dashboard um, later on and store any internal notes here as well. So everything's done based on periods. Um, so if I was to click into a different period right now, I would have a completely different data set and set of notes for that client. So with everything being stored in the cloud, it's just it's simultaneous. Um, everything's there and then ready for reference. If you need to go and check some work from four years ago, you just go into the, the period four years ago and, and everything is as it should be there. But in terms of actually populating the self-assessment, now this is a sort of a direct mirror from the HMRC gateway. So it would just be a case of familiarising yourself with Namisma and, and sort of populating the self-assessment from here. So you can do this from the quick access to the tax return forms on the client dashboard, or you've also got these functions here. So all of these tabs, I won't go through them individually. Um, probably because most of you are familiar with with what's where anyway, but you can just sort of drill down into it and just go ahead and, and start populating the self assessment form. From here, so if I if I again I won't drill down into every single one of these because I'm probably familiar with what's in there, but it's just a case of sort of going in to each tab and populating the necessary data. And in turn, this will populate the self-assessment form ready for submission. Now, where the sort of the, the, the integration comes from that I was talking about at the beginning of the demo where all the modules speak to each other is that with something like self-assessment, let's say, for example, you were doing the bookkeeping for a director limited company and you have to do self-assessments for those directors in, in, in sort of, in tandem with doing the bookkeeping um, for, the, for the limited company, if the limited company and the, the self-assessment were linked, what Namisma would do is just pull through all the relevant data from bookkeeping and auto-populate the self-assessment for the director. So if I go back to dashboard in my self-assessment client, let's say it was a director, we can go to dividend income, and you can auto link the dividends to the company that you do bookkeeping for. 
Now, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, a little side note, um, but this is a demo account, so the data may look a bit ugly, um, but yeah, please do just use your imagination a little bit. And that's my doorbell going, if anyone can hear it. Um, yeah, so that's it for, for example, dividends. Self-employed as well, similarly, if you're doing any bookkeeping for a sole trader, what you can do is link the business um, account, so the bookkeeping account of the sole trader, link it to the self-assessment for the sole trader, and what it would do is it would pull through um, the relevant information, turnover, income, expenditure, that kind of thing. And this will auto-populate the self-assessment for you. So no importing or exporting of data anymore. We've ended data duplication. It's just simultaneous. Just do the bookkeeping if you do it for them um, and, and it will bring it across. If not, because there, there's a lot of people obviously that don't do bookkeeping at all. They just, they just do the self-assessments. Um, it's just a case of coming in and, and sort of manually enter, entering the data as you would normally. These, these, um, all these codes are, are, are again, a direct map of, of HMRC. Um, and you'll see that now if I go into the documents tab. So scenario wise, you've, um, you've populated all the relevant fields with the relevant information for your client for their tax return. What the MISMA will do if you go to the documents tab on the left hand side is it will create all of the documents for you automatically. Um, so you can go ahead, I'll just view these ones for now. Um, you can go ahead and they're all stored there as PDFs that are already automatically converted. There's this internal document storage place as well um, for your clients if you needed to pop in any um, documents just for internal use or whatever, if it relates to the self-assessment, you can. As I say, it's, it's all cloud-based, so just depending on the period that you're in will be um, listed here, all of the necessary documents. So you can see I've just clicked on these views. Um, there's an example of an SA302, so tax calculation summary. And similarly, this is obviously as a result of all the data entry you've done. And then similarly, you have the tax return form here as well that's auto-populated. So I won't go into every single um, report or document here, but you, I'm hoping you sort of grasped the picture. That's what you can do. You can download everything as PDFs um, for if you store them anywhere else or that again, they'll just be stored here periodically anyway, so you don't need to download them. Now with the MISMO, there's the email function. So if you wanted to just directly email your client the documents from, from here, you can go ahead and do that for, i.e. for approval from your client. So we can go over to email. This would be connected to your own personal email, of course. Um, you can select the template. So I'll, when I go back to the agent dashboard, I'll show you this sort of email formatting and the powers of email within the MISMA as well. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and select your, um, you can go ahead and select a email template. It will auto populate with the template that you've personally created with these sort of tags. So it pulls through all the relevant information automatically ready for that email. And what you can go ahead and do here is you can see the attachments. So attach everything as a PDF from the forms that I've just shown you and send it directly to your client from the MISMA. The review and file. So here you can just review the tax calculation. So it'll just give you this form that I just shown you and review the self-assessment, make sure it's all ready to go. And if it is ready to go, you've got your client's approval. Um, you can go ahead and just submit that directly to HMRC from the MISMA. Um, so you can do that by default, it's set to the agent level. However, you can um, set that also to the client level for submission. Any notes for HMRC, um, any internal notes about this submission. Again, document storage if necessary, and you can go ahead and press submit to HMRC. And that will send it straight to HMRC um, and HMRC messaging will come back to Namisma and tell you that it's been submitted um, and so on and so forth. But that is it from an individual um, dashboard. So for the actual client dashboard, that is how you would go in and, and sort of populate the, the self-assessment. Now the get data from HMRC button. So what this does is um, essentially you can just request previous data from HMRC um, and it will put it through here for any of those new clients. Any questions about self-assessment on, on, on a client level at all?
no, okay, if there if one comes in, I'll, I'll answer as we go. But um, back to the agent dashboards. Um, so obviously, that was the the client level. Um, but again, there's a there's a there's a strong emphasis on the practice management element side of things here. So you can see all of your um, clients here in real time. Now, if I went over to the email template setting, so you have this functionality in here where you can create your own email templates in the MISMA to, to be able to just quickly send to, to you know, generic um, emails that you send to clients, tax questionnaires, that kind of thing. Um, you can create them here. So if I, you can see there's there's loads of them made here. Um, but if I actually go ahead and just quickly show you how to add one, you can call it whatever you want um, for internal, internal reference, pop, populate subjects, and then you can start building that email template. Now, what we've done is you've got these tags down here. So this won't be useful for everyone, but it's just a little bit of um, cool functionality to show that you can go ahead and start using these tags. Um, and then what it will do in turn is when you send a mass mail, let's say you're, you're getting ready for tax season and you want to mass mail all 500 of your self-assessment clients, you can email them the same, the same email um, in one go, but it will just make sure that by using these tags, it's pulled the data from Nemisma and creates a completely bespoke email to these clients. But it's just a, um, a little nice feature there. So what I'm talking about is this whole schedule email section. So it's coming to tax season, you want to send them, you know, all of your clients say a mass mail, you can go ahead, press schedule email. Select your template information request. Use your um, tax questionnaire if you have that on Google Docs or if you have it as a Word document, attach it here and you can schedule that email out to however many clients you want to and it will be completely bespoke to them. So they'll feel like they've received it individually. But that is it for self-assessment. Um, everyone happy with that? Any questions about self-assessment at all? Okay, so a few questions here. So do we select the names one by one or just to se select the category of sole traders? So that is indeed a, a very nice um, point that at the moment there isn't the functionality to do that. However, duly noted, um, I really like that suggestion. Um, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we can do about that. And that's actually a really good point for me to mention while we're here. Um, any, we're completely open to any feature requests, any feedback. Um, we're sort of, our slogan is built by accountants for accountants. So all of these little things that are gonna make your lives easier and, and make um, Namisma more more efficient for you we're, we're open to accepting that does the bookkeeping app produce the income statement to submit it to the self-assessment return i'm not too sure on that one but let me um i'll i'll follow up with you in an email about that and just to confirm any more questions about self-assessment before i move on Okay, great. So self-assessment done. Um, I'm back in the agent dashboard now. Oh, does the clients need to link their business bank account to software? So sorry, that was me mumbling under my breath. A question, um, does, the client, the, does the client need to link their business bank account to the software? So they don't have to, um, but what I'm gonna do now is get into the business client. So I'll, I'll show you the banking um, as we go. So we, we do in fact have bank feeds. So if you wanted to, your client, indeed can link their bank account to the software um, in real time, ready for you to go and do the reconciliations. Um, I'll show you that in just a moment. So back to the agent dashboard now, I've done the self-assessment. If I move head on over to the clients tab. So the clients tab, this is essentially where all of your business clients will sit. So you'll remember that once you've added a business client up here, um, they will essentially come in here. So we deal with PLCs, LLPs, um, sole traders, limited companies, and they'll, they'll sit in your client list. Now, again, apologies for the data in here. It doesn't look too nice, but as you can imagine, as you grow completely and you go to any page um, and it will load immediately and you can see all of your businesses. 
Similarly, if you were just looking after, if you were looking after a client specifically, um, you can go ahead and search them and it will bring it through here. So I'm going to be using a and Enterprises as our business client. So from the agent dashboard now, as I go into a and Enterprises, this will bring me through to the business dashboard for the client. Um, so from here, this is where you'll actually begin and come to do all of your work for, for the client. So all of your bookkeeping, banking, VAT returns, final accounts, payroll and self-assessment. So this is sort of where I can actually show you how everything, all the modules integrate. Um, so we're now in AN Enterprises dashboard. You can see on the dashboard, you've got all of these um, lovely little sort of KPIs, what, what's going on within the business. Um, I won't spend too much time on here, but you can see that. For example, pending receipts. So any, if your clients had a login to the bookkeeping app and they were uploading receipts, um, this is where the pending receipts would sit. So ready for you to come in and allocate those receipts to any transactions or what have you. So straight on in, again, this period, period table here. So just um, you can see all of those periods um, and drill down further back if you wish. Straight into sales dashboard. Now I am going to use a different period for this because there's no data in that period. Yep, so here, so uh, for this period, for example, at the sales dashboard, you can see all of the invoices here. Um, so again, if your client had access to the bookkeeping app or, or, you, or Nimisma as a whole, or you were doing it, you can chase and raise any sales invoices from here. Um, the, the sales invoices from the settings will be all on brand for the company as well. So company logos, that kind of thing. And you can, you, you or your client can send directly the invoice from the MISMA to that um, supplier or customer, customer, should I say. We use a traffic light system with the invoicing. So anything in amber has been partially paid, anything in green has been paid, and anything in red is obviously unpaid. Now, we have a feature here where it's simple to do um, reconcile the payment. So for example, this 1200 here, we can go ahead, press it, go to receive payment, choose the bank um, to, to which that payment's come into from the sales invoice. Little description if you wanted. I mean, that would be a pretty expensive lunch, but we can go ahead and save that. And now what this will do is you can see that it's reconciled against the bank transaction. So your invoice will be cleared and that payment has now been allocated to that bank transaction. An example of a sales invoice here. Um, obviously, this is the misma, it'll be on brand to your to your client. And you could go ahead and email that sales invoice out directly to the customer. Expenditure dashboard, pretty much the same. Um, I'll just show you actually in sales how to, um, so new invoice, you've got loads of um, sort of different, you can do repeat invoices, batch entries, um, go ahead and just show you what the raising invoice would actually look like. So you can come here, you've got your customer list, but again, probably pretty familiar with, with this type of stuff. Um, expenditure dashboard, exactly the same, um, same with, with making a payment as well. So. If you owe 2000, you can go ahead and make that payment from whichever bank is necessary. Banking. So moving on to banking, from here, you can have as many bank accounts as you want. We support um, foreign currency as well. So any, any sort of foreign banks you can have listed on here. The bank feeds that we use, we are set up, um, we integrate with our third party, sorry, should I say, is true layer. So you all of your clients can can use the bank feeds and enable those. And true layer is, is the supply for that. Side note about this as well, actually, because I know not many people um people forget about this, but bank feeds actually have to be refreshed every three months. So going forward, if 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 you did come over to the MISMA, just a little point to remember that. Um, got to refresh those bank feeds every three months. Your client just has to log in and, and, and allow it again.
see all of the banks here so we can go into each bank and see 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 what's going on if i head over to the unreconciled transactions hopefully there's some nice juicy data here So here you'll see a list of all of the unreconciled transactions from the bank. Um, oh, sorry, just got a question. In case that it is not refreshed every few months, can we import the transactions as CSV to the bookkeeping app? So you don't have to have bank feeds enabled in the MISMA at all. You Everything, as I say, can be done through mass importing and exporting of CSVs. So if you've got all of that, you can just um, you can you can do it manually. So you can set the bank up manually and you can just carry on sort of importing CSVs if you wanted to. I, again, I'm sorry about this. I'm not sure if you can do it from the app, um, but you can definitely do it from from um, the, the browser, the browser. Um, yeah. So the bank rec here, you can create any rules so you can create bank rules for all of those. Um, clients that you're aware of their transactions so we can go ahead here and create a rule i think it might be because this is a demo account some sometimes it doesn't let me but you can so you can create rules so allocate payments if it's specific text um, invoice numbers transaction numbers uh, you can get quite creative with it um, from that end and then what what that will essentially do is is it might work when I do this actually. When you run the rules, um, depending on the rule that's been set up, what it would do, you can see here briefly, it's starting to do the auto allocation based on the bank rules. Um, and it would just carry on doing that. You can set up multiple rules for this client if you wanted to. Um, but if not, if you didn't want to have any rules, you can just go ahead and do the reconciliation to the correct ledger, um, just like that. So that is banking. As I say, um, here we go. Here's a little, just in case no one wanted to have live bank feeds, um, depending on the bank here. So you can go ahead and set up a new bank account. Just a case of setting the bank up. Um, and this will be sort of a manual way. And then you can go ahead and upload CSVs of transaction files. Yeah, so that is pretty much it for the sales expenditure and banking. Now over in VAT returns, so depending on the VAT scheme that your company sits on, you would have set that up over in settings. I'll just show you that here. So when 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 you set up your company, basically you you come to settings, you can do all the sales invoice stuff here, um, company logos, that kind of thing. Set up the VAT schemes. So depending on the VAT scheme that they sit on will enable um, the bookkeeping to all sort of match up and be correct when it comes to VAT returns. You've got all of your accounting periods here so you can have bespoke and change the accounting periods whatever's necessary for that client. And then sales invoice information here, um, if they're CIS deductible or registered, whatever, um, you, can, you can do that here as well. But back to VAT returns. So your VAT returns will just sit here ready for submission. You can add any new VAT returns. You can email the VAT returns out to your clients uh, and you can go ahead and again, sorry about the data, but you can see there's a £3.33 there. You can go ahead, view that, make sure it's all correct. And, um, and then you can submit that test mode, sorry, but you can submit that directly to HMRC from here. So it's all MTD compliant. Um, your client can do so as well, depending on the level of um, whatever you guys do in terms of bookkeeping. But that is pretty much it for bookkeeping, banking and VAT. Any questions? I know I'm going over it very briefly. Um, so if, if Namisma is something that by the end of it, you might like to trial or anything like that, of course, we, we, we give out 14-day um, free trials. So you can have your own account. It will be a live account as well. So you can log on, have a play around. Um, and you'll have access to all of our training resources, our support team, um, and everyone's more than happy to help you as you go. But any questions about bookkeeping 
and that. Okay, awesome. So this is where it now begins to get a bit more exciting. Um, first of all, the accountant tab. So from here, of course, if you didn't do bookkeeping for any of your clients, that's not a problem. Uh, what you can go ahead and do is just, you know, standard import any TBs and it will populate the final accounts for you. You can add your manual journal entries here. Um, there's a whole range of stuff that you can do here. Reports. So again, your client can have access to these reports as well. If you gave them access, you can go straight into the PL. You can see everything for this period. Um, you can do comparative analysis as well. So you can go ahead and compare that to, let's say, four previous periods. And it's sort of real time information there for you or your client to see. Download these as PDFs um, and export them as CSVs as well. But as I say, loads of reports here. Um, feel free to have a little rummage around. So done with bookkeeping, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head on over to final accounts. So if I go straight into the final accounts tab from AN Enterprises, what this will do is it will bring me to a new final accounts dashboard for AN Enterprises. Now you'll probably notice that as I go with Namisma, we, instead of having a back button, what we do is we tab across. So you'll see here, here's the bookkeeping dashboard for AN Enterprises, and now I'm in the final accounts dashboard. Now this makes perfect sense and I'll show you why, because as I said, with the, with the integration of modules, as a result of doing any bookkeeping for your client, what, it, what the MISMA has already done is it's already made the full accounts. So just, sorry, one question here. Can we prepare fixed asset registers in the MISMA? So depreciation journals can post directly into bookkeeping software monthly. As it stands, um, we don't have the functionality for any fixed asset registers, um, but that is in the pipeline. Um, I, I can't give a time on that, unfortunately, but um, we are thinking about it, yes, so thank you. Um, yeah, so final accounts dashboard. Now, essentially, if I was to go over now, I'll go straight into the final accounts and I can go to full accounts. So again, as a, re as a result of all the sort of um, ledger reconciliations, bookkeeping, that kind of thing, what the MIS will do is it would just create the, full, the FRS 105s here for companies house for a limited company um, ready for direct submission. So I can scroll down is pulled through all the data for this client, of course. You can edit any of these notes as well. So whatever's necessary for you or your client, you can, you can edit these. Um, but what it's gone ahead and done is just created the final accounts automatically here. And you can go into these and you can drill down into the numbers to see what they're made up of. So you see all of the ledgers that it sits in. So this is where it now ties into the tabbing because if you came here and you saw that something doesn't quite look correct, all right, you can go ahead straight into the bookkeeping, amend the ledger, um, amend whatever it is. Um, and sorry, when question comes through, I get a bit um, distracted. Um, yeah, so you, with this tabbing, you can, in fact, just change what's going on in the bookkeeping and then it will filter through and update the final accounts in real time. So you don't have to then import or export a TB um, every time um, if you make an amendment over in bookkeeping. So I just got a question here. Can we import a trial balance and prepare the final accounts here and submit it accordingly? Yes. So over back in the bookkeeping, um, you can go to the accountant tab and you can import a trial balance. And in turn, this will prepare the final accounts. So you don't have to do any bookkeeping. You can just import the TB and it will create the final accounts for you. Back to final accounts. Um, so yeah, you again, you can drill down into all of those numbers, see exactly what they're made up of. Um, and you can see all of the um, further breakdowns here as well, based on the ledgers. Numisma does give you a standard chart of accounts, um, but 
again, without going too deep into it, you do have the possibility to create your own nominal codes, your own ledgers, that kind of thing. And the auto mapping is already done. So um, if you do create any of your own nominal codes, then similar to how it works now, it will just do the automatic um, posting into final accounts for you. Filtered accounts, so of course, these are just the short accounts, won't spend up too much time here, um, but it will just prepare the financial position for you. And then what you can go ahead and do is submit those accounts directly to Companies House from the MISMA. Obviously, you'd have your client approval first, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, but yeah, that is how you um, answer uh, file, sorry, file those accounts to the company's house there. Got another question. Can we rename the account heads in final accounts? Yes. So as a result, if I head over to um, back to my bookkeeping dashboard, so from the accountants tool in the top, you can go over to nominal codes. And we give you here a standard chart, as I say. Um, and if you wanted to create your own, you can just go ahead, add account, obviously choose the type of account, give the expense head a name, and then choose your ledger. Yeah, I hope that helps. So that is they for so for limited companies that is your FRS 105s for companies house you can do the submission directly there and as I say all real time pulls the data from bookkeeping or the importing of a TV. CT 600 then so you can do all your corporation tax here as well. Um, Nemisma will pick up what is necessary from bookkeeping and pull it over. However, obviously it's completely subjective, um, the CT600. So similar to self-assessment module, it's just a case of you coming in and um, manually inputting the data necessary for the CT600. Um, like, like so, it's pulled some stuff through. Again, I won't go through everything here as such, but um, probably quite familiar with what's required for a CT600. Um, but just some of these things, CT computation, again, export everything you need to as PDFs um, and, and whatever. Yeah. Again, submit that CT600 directly to HMRC from here as well. Um, and hey presto, it's all done. And uh, add as well. So as a result of all this sort of final account submissions that you're doing and CT600 submissions that you're doing, this will then feed exactly back to your agent dashboard where you'll see um, the current status of all your deadlines and the work and who's done what um, allocation of accountants that kind of thing so pretty pretty um one other thing maybe is the documents tab for final accounts so similar to the self-assessment um self-assessment dashboard, you can upload internal documents for internal storage here as well. And this is where you'll actually find your accounts, the ones that I've just shown you as, as PDF format. But before I actually show you documents tab, it might be more interesting to show you this email section. So again, you have the functionality to email to directly to your clients. So this becomes especially useful when you're seeking approval from your client for the company accounts. So what we can go ahead and do is go to email, select your template. So whatever templates you've created for final accounts module, let's say final accounts draft approval template, you can select that. What it will do is it will create the email based on the data that's in final accounts. Um, again, this will be super bespoke to whatever you wanted it to show here and what you can go ahead and do is you can attach the company accounts as PDFs and you can go ahead and just send that directly to your client's inbox and um, they can they can approve it. Um, there's, there's no, so in terms of approval, obviously you're just sending the accounts to your client from here. So we've sort of given you a solution to just be able to send it all in one go, all the PDFs automatically attached to the email but just out of interest, actually, we are looking to potentially, and I say potentially, um, have some form of e-signature function here. So when this email sends, what it will do is actually um, have 
an e-signature e function so your client can just sign it there and then within the email. Um, is that something that people would be interested in maybe seeing at some point? I mean, yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, so you can just send out your accounts um, there and then for approval and then it's all done. And then once they come back and say they've signed them and that they're all ready to go, they've been approved, what you'd do is you'd just go to, is you'd go ahead and, and follow the, the submission process as you would. And then this documents, if you've got an e-signed copy from your inbox of the accounts, you can just upload those signed documents here for that period and then move on with life knowing that everything's compliant and is safely stored in the MISMA. So in terms of data storage and security, also a little side note, we um, really use the AWS server. So the safest of the safest servers, um, all of your storage will be completely safe um, through AWS server. Shown email, haven't I yet? So settings here, similar to what I was um, speaking about earlier, the note template settings. So you can go ahead and edit um, any of those notes within the, within the company accounts. Any CT adjustments here as well. Yeah, any questions about final accounts at all while I'm here? No, great. Well, I must be a very good, uh, a very good explainer then. Um, so that is final accounts module. Now, just a little side note here as well. When we get into so the last thing I'm to show you is payroll. Um, yeah. Okay. So I've got a question here. What is that need help button? Um, so this need help button is a. We have um, these little things in here. Um, called walk me. So if you are struggling to sort of find where something is, want to know how to do something, you can go ahead and you can click into um, these and it will show you exactly where to go um, to sort of get what you need doing done. We also have a video library. So we have a YouTube channel on the MISMA. So all of there's a whole bank of sort of video tutorials and FAQs, um, FAQs there. Um, that you can go in and have a look at for training. And of course, um, we have a training and support team. So any questions, anything that you're struggling with, need some support, just give us a call. And we'll be able to help you over the phone or via email. Feature request as well, as I was mentioning earlier, very open to um, client feedback, customer feedback. Uh, so just anything that you don't see in the MISMA that you would want that would make your life 10 times easier, submit it as a feature request. We'll see what we can do. Um, if we need to change the accountant's report from ACTA to ACO, then where can we go to change? Yeah, so you can do that. Um, if I head into settings and go to account settings, you can see here, um, I can go in and you can change that to the relevant awarding body. So these account settings, um, sort of all your ad hoc stuff behind, behind everything, but yeah, you can do that. Can we submit confirmation statements from the MISMA? Yes, you can. However, for the purpose of today, I am show, I'm essentially showing you everything compliance. So bookkeeping, payroll, self-assessment, um, bookkeeping, payroll, self-assessment, and final accounts. We do have a, uh, a complete CRM system. So from the CRM system, um, and again, this is sort of open to anyone that would be looking to sort of booking with me and I can, I can, I can go through CRM with you. Um, but essentially our CRM really is an end-to-end -end onboarding process of new leads to client. So if you're looking to grow your practice, um, um, that, that type of thing, what, what our CRM does is you're able to do all of your letters of engagement. 
You can create your quotes and proposals using a value-based pricing matrix that we have at Namisma. You can do the end-to-end -end onboarding. So you can do all of the AML checks. Um, you can send off a professional clearance. And so you can sort of manage all of your, your new leads until their clients in there um, as well. So sorry, where are we getting into confirmation statements? So the company secretarial attribute of Namisma sits within the CRM. So you can do all of your um, company secretarial in the MISMA CRM as well. Um, so you can um, file your confirmation statements, you can appoint any officers, resign any officers, allot any shares, um, that kind of thing. And it's got the, the, you can incorporate companies as well. So everything company secretarial really. So as far as confirmation statements sit, they are within the CRM, um, which I'm happy to show anyone. I'm gonna email everyone that's joined today anyway so you'll have my direct email going forward um, and i'll be able to redirect you and get that sorted any more questions about final accounts bookkeeping self-assessment i just got payroll to to show you guys next again um okay i'll move on i hope everyone hasn't forgotten obviously all of these modules are completely integrated so they're they if, if you wanted them to be standalone modules so in terms of pricing, maybe I'll touch upon that a little bit towards the end, but our pricing at Namisma is modular. So um, if you wanted to have final accounts alone, you could. If you wanted to have bookkeeping of that alone, you could. If you wanted to have payroll alone, you could. Um, but if not, if you do a whole, if you offer a whole range of services to each of your clients and you do everything, then you can have it all in one and they'll all talk to each other, um, making essentially your life a lot easier for that one client that you do bookkeeping, payroll and accounts for. Um, but yes, moving on from final accounts. So let's come out of here and head over. So I'm back in the business dashboard for a and Enterprises now. Um, what I'll head over to do is I can go into the payroll. So this will now bring me through to the payroll um, tab of the MISMA. So you can do all of your payroll here. Um, is from here I'll show you sort of show you the initial setup. I won't spend too much time on it because for anyone that does do payroll or use payroll software, um, it's, it's sort of pretty self-explanatory. However, from our end, what we've done at the MISMA is we are interconnected with the pension providers. So as a result of running any pension provider, uh, sorry, running any payroll, what it would do is it will file directly with the pension providers and it will also send over the RTI, P11Ds, um, pension contributions back to your agent dashboard ready for direct submission to HMRC. Um, so just a little bit about the payroll as well. We do have a Namisma payroll app. So for anyone um, payroll crazy out there, you can give your clients logins. So all of the employees of your client can actually have a login to Namisma Payroll, um, the Namisma Payroll app. So this is what the app looks like. Um, this is on the Play Store, it's on the App Store as well. So Android and Apple. Um, but yeah, essentially, what, what the employees of your client can do is they can view all of their pay slips, they can request any leave, they can see all of their annual leave, they can submit any expense reimbursements. Um, so it's a pretty nice feature and that's, um, you have that there for, for any of your employees as well. So it's all sort of GDPR compliant in terms of them being able to access their own pay slip um, completely on the app. So the initial setup really with Namisma Payroll, it's just a case of your data entry. So for edit company, um, you've got your, your annual pay schedules here. If they're monthly, you can have them fortnightly, um, whatever suits your clients. CIS Payroll, P11D um, here. So any benefits in kind. Um, and yeah, so you, what you do is you just set this up initially, um, PAYE, HMRC, so it creates the link with those. And, and hey presto, you can start doing your payroll. Bank details, so you can put in company bank details as well and employee bank details and in turn, the MISMA will create the BACS form for you. So if you do help your client with that type of payment, then you can just give them the, back, the BACS form ready for the bank. Any company specific terms here. So there is a little bit of a HR management system that you'll have with the MISMA payroll. So you can manage all the holiday or the leave for the employees of your clients 
um, if that's the service that you offer, um, but you have that here. We won't worry about that. Sir. But once obviously the, um, the initial setup of the company firm, we can go ahead and then add in employee specifics. And in turn, um, when you run the payroll, everything's calculated correctly and accordingly, sorry. So employee details, tax code, salaries, day rates, um, whatever's necessary here, you know, it's just all the ad hoc stuff behind it. Employee bank details, employee specific terms. So again, leaving into that HR management aspect here um, and any emergency contacts as well. So that's the initial setup really. Um, in terms of pension providers that we work with, so as I was saying with Namisma, um, interconnected with the pension providers, so it would just do the filings for you. I can go over to launch SMT here, just for the demo purposes. And these are the pension providers that we work with. So legal and general, people's pension, Nest, Smart, Now and Aviva, pretty big ones. Um, that these are the, the pension providers that we have a direct integration with. But back to here, so um, automat automatic enrollment um, is there as well. You can set up annual payroll schedules. Um, and then here down to the employees. So these are all of the employees for this, for AN Enterprises. And each employee will have their own dashboard. So you can come in and you can add any additions, deductions, you can edit the pay, add any leave. So if you did the leave management for your client, you could. And Namisma will also um, produce all of the pay slips for you. So you'll be able to see all of the pay slips here, um, just as PDFs. An example, um, this is just a demo pay slip, but just to give you an idea. So an employee dashboard, there we go. Um, if I was to go ahead and run this payroll now, we'll just go to run. You can, it will give you a little synopsis of about to, of what's about to be run. If you needed to edit anything for that particular payroll run date, you can just go in, you can edit those, any additions, deductions, lines on the pay slip, um, get that done. And then what you can go ahead and do is run that payroll and you have the option to either email the pay slips to the employer, the employee, or not email them at all. Um, Again, if, 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 you're, if they had access to the app, then you wouldn't need to email them, but you do have that functionality there as well. So you can go ahead and run that payroll. And what, what essentially happens when you run that payroll is it will post the, post the wages journal actually into final accounts. So again, ending that data duplication, um, it will post the wages journal into final accounts. It will post BRTI to your agent dashboard, P11D to your agent dashboard, EPS, FPS, um, ready for submission. So you can run the payroll without um, necessarily filing, but um, yeah, you can do that. Then the last thing really with, um, with payroll here is if I go over to reports. So as a result of, um, data entry that you've done. Um, Namesma will just create all of the payroll reports for you as well. So if I head into P60s, it's just created all the P60s for the employees. So you can go ahead and view that. And similar to most all the other pages um, in Namesma, if necessary, you can go ahead and email those P60 forms to the employer or the employee. Um, the same with all of these reports really. So I won't go into every single one, they're there at your disposal if you need them, but it will create the reports nice and easy for you. The employer actually as well. So something a little bit about the app or the employer login. Um, the employer will have access to some form of reports as well. So if you did manage to get all of the employees of your client on the Namisma payroll app, um, the employee can actually just ask the employer, i.e. your client for the P60. So it's sort of saving that whole thing of them having to come to you to give it to them, to give it to them. The employer from the app will just be able to email the employee who's asked for it directly, the P60. So I can actually show you actually, so the employer view, this is what your, if your client had access to logging into their own payroll, then they could come here and 
this is all the information of their employees. They can go to quick reports and um, yeah, that your, the employer, i.e. your client can go ahead and just, um, or if you do any payroll just for individuals, you can go ahead and, and email those directly to them. Any questions about payroll at all? Okay, perfect. So really, um, in a nutshell, and that's perfect timing as well. I don't know how I do it every time, but um, essentially, so just one last thing, obviously from um, the agent dashboard, again, we, you can do any, you can do all your CIS clients, um, partnership returns, but again, without going into everything, every single thing here, um, just know that that's a functionality. So I'm just going to, I'll hang around for a bit, um, but essentially I hope you've enjoy, enjoyed today's demo and can see the functionality of the MISMA, um, how all the modules sort of integrate, interconnect, um, and how it could maybe benefit you and your practice or you and your, your daily runnings. Um, if, again, just a side note, we, are, we offer 14-day um, free trials. So I'm going to pop everyone an email that's joined now. Um, and and um yeah feel free to get in touch with me for a 14 day free trial also someone just asked me about pricing so i can run through pricing quickly um if if anyone wants to hang around um and in terms of crm as well sorry so crm yeah we're, we'll we'll get a crm session set up if anyone wants to see crm um, it, it'll only take about 25 minutes or half an hour to go through the whole CRM system. It won't take as long as this. Um, but what you just just um, reply to my email and I'll, I'll see if I can get a session booked up with anyone individually that wants to see CRM. But just a little bit about the pricing. So at the moment, actually, we are allowing free self-assessments and free final account submissions until the end of June. Um, this isn't gonna, this offer won't be on for long. So if anyone does want to snap me up on it, um, feel free and we'll get, we'll get the ball rolling. But if I head over now to the MISMA pricing. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the MISMA pricing is done on a modular basis. So for those monthly bookkeeping clients that you do bookkeeping and VAT for, they are five pounds per month. For that whole client and what you get without going into too much detail as to what you get um one thing about the misma um is that everything is done on a 30-day rolling basis so there's no contracts no requirements no minimum terms um it's uh, we've got a little slogan here as pay as you grow so if you've got one client or if you've got 10 clients you just pay for the usage so if you've got one client you pay for one client if you've got 12 clients you pay for 12 clients um, that's the way the pricing works um, there's no internal or upgrade or external fees. Um, there's no hidden charges or anything like that. Um, so everything that I've spoken about today is included within this. So bank feeds, accountant user licenses, business user licenses, all of the apps, it's all just included within that price. Um, you don't have to pay any extra for any of that. So bookkeeping and VAT, any of those monthly bookkeeping and VAT clients that you do on a monthly basis, five pounds per month, and that gives them access to one final account submission and two self-assessment submissions. Um, so one final account submission would be your, let's say, FRS 105 to the company's house and your CT 600 for that client. Any payroll. So again, if you had bookkeeping and VAT and payroll, then the price would be eight pounds per month plus VAT for that client. Whereas if it was just had a payroll client, then you would just pay three pounds for that payroll client. Similarly, if you just did year end accounts and accounts production for some of your clients, and it was just a one off submission that you do um, for the year and any self assessment clients as well, then obviously at the moment, the submissions are free until June. However, after that, um, then submissions will be five pounds per submission. So you only pay at the point of submission. Um, you can have access to the final accounts module and the self-assessments module 
for the whole year. So what I was showing you earlier with the whole sort of practice management element side of things with your self-assessments, especially, um, you've got access to the module for the whole year. You can have as many clients in there as you want, um, but you would only ever pay, as I say, upon submission. So if you was just to submit two of them, you would pay a tenner for your submission um, as and when you do the submission. Now, um, that is as straightforward as the minimum pricing is. As I say, there's no, there's nothing sort of, there's no captures or anything like that. It's just a pay-as-you-go system. Um, um, yeah. And then obviously I haven't spoken about CRM today, but if you wanted CRM, um, then our CRM would cost you £29 per user per month. So if it's just one of you, it costs you £29 a month to use the CRM on top of the sort of variable client, um, client prices that I've just shown you. But yeah, anyone that wants to see CRM will get it set up. So when I say about internal charges, there's nothing. However, with CRM, um, there would be, for any AML check that's done because we use a third party for that, um, it would be £2 per AML check. And also within the compliance side, the only other fee would be any employees above 10 employees would cost you 50p per month per employee. But, but that's it. Um, yes. So again, uh, I'll, I'll leave it here. I'll say thank you to everyone so much for joining. Um, great turnout today. Um, and if anyone, yeah, I'll, I'll pop everyone an email. And if anyone wants to get in touch, please feel free. I'll set you up with a free trial um, and I'll sort of be your point of contact going forward as well. Um, again, while everyone's still lingering around, um, I'll be here for questions. There's, if you want to go check out our YouTube channel, um, we've got a whole bank of YouTube stuff on there. Some stuff that I might have missed today. Um, you can go in and see the more sort of deep rooted, cool features that you can do. You can do that. But I'm going to stop talking now because I can go on forever. But any questions, hit me and uh, I'll, get, I'll get them answered. Okay, I can see everyone's dropping off like flies now. So for anyone that's remaining, um, I will say my goodbyes and anything else, please do just get in touch. Cheers guys, bye.